the SCSTs cannot be further subdivided. Now, he re refers to Chennaiya in that respect. And he says, therefore, the question of giving EWS to SCST categories or, or for SEBCs does not arise. Now, then he says that if you give it, you cross the 50%. That is when the legislations which are put in the ninth schedule can be tested on the ground for violation of basic structure doctrine. It's a very well settled principle that the test of constitutional virus is dependent upon its impact of the state action. It's not based merely on the statement of object. How it impacts finally is the test that my lords will apply. I just one minute. Learner solicitor handed over this particular thing saying that there has been an increase of seats, etc. Please, my lords, we cannot forget the fact, whatever be the number of seats, the principle of reservation as envisaged under 15 will apply. And it my lords, I will try and be very, very fast and swift. My lords, this contains my original submissions. The last four pages are the rejoinder. Out of that four pages, it won't be even two pages because argument of the other side, as I believe has been addressed, has been put forward. So if my lords may just come to the end, there is a short rejoinder. It will be probably at page 25, just at the end. Please don't look at the first part. There's only one paragraph in the first part that I will advert to, maybe not even read. My lords have small on the rejoinder. Yeah. Now, my lords, let me just put on issue by issue, as has been urged by the other side, and I have my response there. My lords, as I understand, the learned attorney general had put a proposition that SCSTs cannot be further subdivided. Now, he re refers to Chennaiya in that respect. And he says, therefore, the question of giving EWS to SCST categories or, or for SEBCs does not arise. Now, then he says that if you give it, you cross the 50%. That is the argument that is advanced. Now, my lords, my response to this particular thing is that if we accept this proposition, then in that case, we can't even do a horizontal reservation because in all horizontal reservations, whether it is for women, disabled persons, children, wards of ex-servicemen, etc., it would amount to subdividing them within that. So therefore, I respectfully submit that that proposition does not meet the test. In horizontal reservation, we already have that principle of providing for that. And therefore, to say that it will subdivide may not be correct at all. Now, subdivision is proscribed in Chennaiya and other judgments following Chennaiya are based on specific caste groups and therefore social. Criteria such as economic weakness are lateral and there is no rational to discriminate persons belonging to SCBCs, SCs or STs to not allow their participation. Now, my lords, I would request my lords, and I'm not going into the judgment, my lords have discussed at length the principles of horizontal and vertical reservation in my Lord's judgment in Saurav Yadav. And this, my Lord's will completely, as I put it, comes from that particular principle laid down there. Now, my Lord's, let me come to the second argument. The argument that was advanced was that basic structure doctrine, as in Indrasani 1 and Indrasani 2, and other judgments is of no relevance because they do not arise in a context of challenge to a constitutional amendment and no basic structure test could have been employed while dealing with an office memorandum, which was the case in Indra Sani's case. Now, my lords, a paragraph from Bhim Singh's judgment of Justice Y.B. Chandrachud, as it then was, was read out. First of all, that passage in Bhim Singh that was read out is actually an obiter. Number two. That passage has been subsequently overruled in I.R. Coelho. Yes, it should be taken to have been overruled because, my lords, what has been said now is that in I.R. Coelho, that even the legislations which are put in the ninth schedule can be tested on the ground for violation of basic structure doctrine. And lastly, taking I.R. Coelho and Madras Bar Association, my lords have held particularly also in I.R. Coelho, March of Law. So therefore, precedents and law that has been laid down by this court in Indira Sani is a legal position that tests the basic structure doctrine. And it cannot be said that merely because it was decided in the context of an I.O., it cannot be said to be applied.
to the present amendment. I hope my lords, I have made myself clear because I am, and my lords will find this Madras Bar Association paragraph extracted here at page number 18. It's only for the convenience of my lords. I've extracted that particular paragraph at page number 18. It's the last few sentences of that paragraph, about 10 lines from the bottom, which lays down the structure after recording arguments on both sides. Now, my lords, therefore, my submission will be that Indra Sani 1 and 2, more particularly 2, is required to be treated as a voice of this court, and there is nothing that warrants overruling of the same, or to say that the guidelines, principles laid down in Indra Sani will not apply to the present amendment, merely because that was an OM, and here it's an amendment to the Constitution. It's the principle. Now, my lords, coming to the next. My lords, it was... It was debated across and also urged by, I believe, by the learned attorney general that alternate facts and figures cannot invalidate a constitutional amendment and this court cannot go into facts and figures for the purpose of invalidating. My simple reply to that is, my lords, it's a very well settled principle that the test of constitutional varies is dependent upon its impact of the state action. It's not based merely on the statement of object. How it impacts, finally, is the test that my lords will apply to test the constitutional virus. Now, it will not be merely because it sounds that very well we are providing. So my lords, the facts and figures that have been placed before this court will go to show that the impact of this particular state action actually affects the constitutional, it actually uh, affects basic structure doctrine and has an impact which cannot withstand the scrutiny of this court. Now, my lords, it goes to the very core idea of the equality, that's the principle. Now, my lords, the learned solicitor general, and I think this is an important response that we need to consider, and it was also argued by my learned friend, Mr. Gopal Shankar Narayan, as I heard it just now. It is suggested that not all intrusion, incursions into the basic features destroy the basic structure of a constitution. What was said was that the alleged breach of basic structure is not a mere violation unless it is shocking, unconscionable, unscrupulous travesty of quintessence of the constitution. My laws, please put it on a test. If this proposition is accepted, then you can go ahead, hit the basic structure of the constitution chip by chip. Go at it chip by chip. It's not shocking. It is small. You'll have a next one. Now, where this principle comes from, if my laws may just give me the benefit at page number 21 yes. of my submissions. And my laws, I just have very short ones. I'll finish with this very quickly so that my friends have an opportunity and I don't eat into their time. My lords, the principle comes from what is called page number 21, paragraph 19.1, about third line. The, the principle that comes here is from the ship of Caesar's paradox in philosophy offers a relevant parallel. If over a period of time, every single part of a ship is replaced by a new part, at what stage does a ship become a new ship? And therefore, if we accept this proposition, that is not shocking. It does not affect. It is something very small. And we can go at it slowly, slowly chipping away. We will one day do not know whether the ship is new or it was what was expected by this post on the principle of a basic structure doctrine. So my lords, I would respectfully submit that a proposition of that has to be taken with utmost caution and utmost restraint, if I may say so. Now, my lords, I come to the next submission. Which is, which is made by my uh, by a colleague, learned solicitor general. The primary argument that is said was that the constitutional does not allow for migration of SCSTs, who are the most backward, to vertical reservations created for SCBCs, which are relatively less backward. Now, constitution can create another zone of affirmative action. This is the argument for EWS category, which exists outside the fold of pre-existing reservation. My lords, I would respectfully submit that, first of all, 
we are not here in this matter and we have not tested that principle of migration of SCSTs into the OBCs. There is no argument that is advanced. It is an area that should be left at the time when there is an issue that is raised. Having said that, in any case, in RK Sabharwal and down the line, my lords have recognized that while there is reservation for SCSTs and OBCs, that does not prevent them, whether it is under 16.4 and 16.4a, to move into the general categories if they are so meritorious. Now, if migration there from the reserve category to the general category is permissible, now this is taking back to EWS, which excludes other than classes mentioned in clause 4 and 5 of 15 and 16, apply the same test then there. Please consider it that we are then, people are only, there is a limited, I have already argued it, I'm not reiterating. Proportionate reservation is never envisaged under 15 and 16. Only area where proportionate reservation is envisaged, and I think there my learned friend should have pointed out, Mr. Gopal Shankar Narayan, is under 343T and 343D. That is where reservation for scheduled caste, scheduled tribe is proportionate to their population in a constituency, but not under 15. Now, if they are not proportionate, their representation within the reservation class is small and limited. There are many which are left out. There are many which are left out, which may also be eligible under EWS. So therefore, to exclude them by saying that no, there is reservation for them, will be actually failing the test and failing even the test of RK Sabharwal, which recognizes that you can be considered under the general category. Now, my lords, very, very quickly, there is an argument that is suggested that exclusion of EWS from EWS is not that of caste, but that of classes who are already receiving the benefit of a special provision. Now, my lords, in this, my reply is, this argument is completely fallacious in my respectful submission. The reservations have been made only for adequate representation and have not been given in proportion to their respective population for each group. Therefore, even within those classes receiving the benefit of reservation, the individuals within the same group, despite being recognized as backward, are unable to receive the benefit. There is therefore no justification advanced to discriminate against them, particularly on an economic criteria, which can only be a lateral consideration. Now, my loss is just, uh, I'm just moving on. Then, my loss, then there is an argument on a breach of 50% uh, limit. My lords, I have in paragraph 24 de dealt with it in detail. I'm not going to take the time of my learned friend, but here I have only one submission. Learned solicitor, I just one minute. Learned solicitor handed over this particular thing saying that there has been an increase of seats, etc. Please, my lords, we cannot forget the fact, whatever be the number of seats, the principle of reservation as envisaged under 15 will apply and it is not the case made out by the government. So therefore, it will be 50, 40, whatever percentage will apply to these seats. So there cannot be that we have increased the seat, so therefore we have another 10%. Lastly, my laws, there is no mention under 16, whether there is a job opportunity. This is only in the education sector. This is my last point, and this is on the doctrine of severability. I accept the argument advanced by my learned friend on severability. I believe that if my laws were to uphold this, the deletion of the last portion, other than classes mentioned in clause four and five, will serve the purpose. And this principle, my laws, it may not be reading down principle here. I have dealt with in my submission. It might be on a severability. And here, my laws, I place that judgment of Hiralal Hansora versus Kusum Hansora in the domestic violence case, where my laws applied the same test of uh, severability you, and deleted the... Thank you. My laws, Thank can I have you. just one thing, just one line, ah, okay, one line. Please. My laws mentioned about the guardrails for so far as the economic weaker section is concerned. Now, my laws, when the principle is a single criteria of economic backwardness or an economically weaker section, then that cannot be applied differently to different segments of the population. The guardrail is only one, economically weaker. 
There is no other guardrail. So my lords, I leave it. Thank you. My lords, I am grateful. We are sorry if we are overshooting your work.